Hiya, I'm Hallie Labonte, and this is Mega, coming to you from Indiana Dunes Lakeside Retreat. Normally every week we give our mega church a tiny family feel, but this week we're on Leadership Retreat. Ooh, it is a treat and it is a treasure, and per usual, I'm joined by my co-host. He's the youth pastor for our high school ministry called Climax. Please welcome my friend and yours, Mr. Gray Haas. Hallie, I am pinching yourself. Just so excited Praising to him. be here with you and to be with our amazing leadership team. It has been amazing. <laughs> it's such a true life honor and dream of mine to be here that I almost feel like I'm teetering on pride. I don't want to be prideful. I don't want to stumble in sin uh, because it is humbling to work uh, in the army of God. But um, I'm just so happy to be here. I'm just so glad to be included. I'm so, it is It is one of the greatest honors of my life to be serving on a mega church leadership team and to be able to do wonderful experiences like this. Lead Pastor Steve is leading us in these bonding experiences and he's casting vision and he's telling us about the upcoming ministry season. And we get to take all these awesome breakouts and work Shops. It's amazing. And oh. I, you know, I feel the same way, Hallie, except I don't even feel lucky. I feel, uh, I don't know what the word is, but just um, assured, I guess, because I've always wanted to be on leadership and I have been and my seat is at the table and that feels right. Oh, that's awesome. Great. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what did you, uh, what sort of breakouts did you do today? Uh, Hallie, I had some amazing, I saw you were teaching one. I know I did. How did it go? Well, I was doing uh, a, a new workshop that I came up with. It's called stay energized, how to enthusiastically engage, uh, teens for Christ and Jesus specifically. And it went great. I had people doing all sorts of I, I really, I like to get really physical in my workshops. Oh, cool. and so I had them do a Murph basically, which is a, a workout that we do at CrossFit. And a lot of people uh, dragged a bit on that. And I said, Hey gosh, we got to keep our energy up uh, because, you know, even after they uh, complained and uh, two people threw up, I said, huh. now try to bring that same amount of passion and energy uh -huh. that I was trying to get you to do in the workout to whatever you're doing when it comes to, um, you know, your ministry. That is so cool. It Gray. was great. That's awesome. I I didn't see it in the list in the program. What was it called again? I'm going to look it oh, up. It's called uh, en enthusiast enthusiasticity. Uh, how to bring a creative innovation to uh, youth and Jesus ba Jesus and Christ based uh, ministry. That is so cool. Yes. Are you doing it again? Should I take it? I, I will be doing it one more time, uh, maybe tomorrow if, uh, you know, we, we've had a, a few people back out. And I think it's just because um, I'm pretty busy tomorrow. And I, I, I've told a few people I might not be able to do the whole, whole workshop, but it was full. Um, so, yeah, if you want to take it, that would be great, Hallie. Oh, that's so great. Um, if I can remember the name or if you can point it out. Uh, I'll be there. That sounds great. Well, the name just, uh, the name is easy to remember. Okay. Uh, what's it called again? Just so I can, I'm going to write it down this time. Uh, it's ex, uh, express, uh, well, I think it's in enthusiasm, enthusiast, enthusiasticity, uh, how to keep engagement Got high it. with energy and focus with youth Christ based activities for Jesus. Specifically. Yes. Here it is. Okay. Cool. I'm going to come. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Where, where were you today, Hallie? Oh, lost and found. Oh, I think I heard about that workshop. Was that the uh, ta uh, tactful tricks to coach uh, refugees to Christ? Oh, no. I was in the actual lost and found. Oh, did you lose something? Yeah. I lost my caboodle. <laughs> What's a caboodle? My caboodle. My makeup caboodle. Caboodle. My tackle box. What? Do yeah. you know fishing? No, but I don't go anywhere without a full face of makeup. I got to define where everything is or nobody will know what's there. Um, yeah, like I always say about makeup, if the barn needs painting, paint it. I, you know what I, I mean? don't know what the word you're saying is, though, Hallie. Could a caboodle. Be, what is that? It's something like a tackle box where it has the different compartments. You open it up. It has different layers, you know, kind of like when a pipe organ has separate layers of keys. Why don't you just call it a, a makeup case? Oh, well, I call it my painter's kit. Because um, 
every morning I got to put on my spackle. Right, right. You've said something similar to that. Wait, so you lost, you lost, I lost it. And I sat there for hours and I filled out all this paperwork. And then, uh, I realized I hadn't prayed about it. And so I shot a quick one up and guess what happened? The minute I said in Jesus name, amen, I hear the lady behind the counter. She goes, Hallie. No. Yep. Just like that. As soon as I prayed, I waited for hours and hours and filled out all the paperwork. And then finally, once I prayed about it, there it happened. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Where was the cubital uh, located? Oh, somebody had taken it down onto one of the docks on the lake because they thought it was a fish and tackle box. And they were out there. um, I don't know what they were catching, bluegill or sunfish or what, but they were using my makeup as bait. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. That's a bit. But did you get it back? Yeah, I got it now. Okay. And I had some land comb in there. They've been discontinued. I mean, that is a, I, I bet I have a thousand dollars worth of makeup in that makeup oh, box. I'm and so I quiet. kid you not. Well, that is uh, a, a, a load off. I'm sure you're back. And um, I know that people are probably wondering really what we are up to when it comes to the leadership retreat and the and, and the type of conversations we're having here. And, you know, something that Steve is doing this year uh, that I think is amazing is uh, he's building on something that we did last year called the Enneagram. And what the Enneagram awesome. is, is it's a personality test, Hallie. And once you know somebody's Enneagram number, you take a test, you know their number, and you kind of know, okay, it's this type of person. And now I know how to talk to them, uh, you know, experience them, relate to them, or control them. And so uh, this year, Steve said, you know, we're tossing the Enneagram out because that is not actually Christian, even though a lot of Christians think it is. I know. It looks like a pentagram or some form of witchcraft, but for some reason, Christians dig it. Right. And Steve said, look, we are putting way too much value in this in this thing, and I'm getting a bit worried. So what Steve did, and yeah. this is because he this is, is awesome. I mean, he's a genius, is he created his own Christianality test. A Christianality test. You heard it here first, folks. I mean, this is, he's the he's a world-class leader, and, you know, speed of the leader, speed of the team, and he's going to shoot us right to the top. And, does, um, and doesn't he have, like, a PhD in, in psychology some, or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you know it's going to be good. And, From um, Trinity. That's right. And so he said, you know, I have developed a whole thing where I can give you a personality test and that's going to help us really find our way when it comes to what is your personality at Twin Hills at church. But it's combined with Christianity. It's the Christianality uh, personality test, the Christian personality, you know, but uh, uh, so it's, it's combining what we know is true. The world will say this is a lie, but we know that your Christianity and your personality are, are enmeshed. Yes. Yeah, it's and, it's the same thing. And so I guess he first said first you have to know um the letters. So he had this whole letter system and he's like by the end you'll have four letters that represent your christianality at at work. And um so starting is E and that stands for exhorting. Awesome. Exhorting, which if people uh, who aren't Christian don't know what exhorting means, I don't know why you'd be listening to this podcast, but it just basically means to tell people, you know, to proclaim, to declare. I also think it's to warn. Right. Sometimes it can be bad uh, exhorting, sometimes good, uh, but it's in it's in the Bible. So E is exhorting. You got I, inspirer. Awesome. Inspirer. You got T. Trinitarian. Awesome. I know I'm one of those. I know I'm one of those because I love the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then you've got F, faithful. Faithful. Uh, He is so faithful. And then you've got S, spirit-filled. I love that one. I hope I have that one. I'm really going for that one, too. I hope I have that one. And then N, naysayer. Uh, And we've got a few of those, believe it or not, on staff. uh, Yeah, yeah. And I just hope they really get you know, I hope Steve really takes him to task if anybody's an N and I definitely am not. Uh, then you got J Judas and, yep. and, you know, Judas There's is always a complicated one, one mm-hmm. because Steve said, you know, it's somebody that start, can, can, can be good to your face, but then the next thing you know, you know, they're doing something behind your back, like selling you, you know, sell, selling you, you for 30 pieces of silver up the river. I know people like that. So, uh, so you got J Judas and last P Pharisee. 
mm-hmm. and Pharisee, you know, the type of person that's really letter of the law. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm always doing the rules and you're not doing the rules right. And, and, right. and then meanwhile, you know, you've got the J's around or the, as I'll say, uh, not the Judas's, but the Jesus is in this case going like, Hey, there's a new way. We've got a better way of thinking about these things. So E I T F S N J and P are the letters that you can get. That is so awesome. That so is- Hallie, as you know, we are supposed to partner up with somebody else at the at the leadership yeah, conference all the staff are supposed and to- take the test together and see what we get so we can uh, report back tomorrow. So do you want to do it together? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm so tickled to death that you want to do it with me, Gray. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's great. Okay. So here we go. Um, the first question and, and is- may I yeah. ask real quick? So Steve- created this Christianity test. Oh, Steve you know, made, uh, made made up the whole thing, he said. I am so excited. Uh, this feels very intimate. It is so great. Okay. So the first question here is... Uh, but before we leave Pharisees, yeah. I just want to say, you know, um, in case I get Pharisee, which I hope I don't, because I, I want, I'm a Jesus follower, you know, I'm right. not a rule follower. And, um, well, I do like to follow the rules as long as they're Jesus's rules. Right. But you know what, Gray? I mean, the Bible, if you boil it all down, you know what it says? It says, love God and it says, love people. And that is how Jesus asks us to live. Um, you know, the Pharisees are trying to force their beliefs on everybody and we don't do that. Right. We really don't. We live Jesus so loud that people are attracted and they say, what you've got, I want what she's having. That's type right. of thing. I hope I don't get Pharisee and I okay. hope you don't get Judas. I won't, but uh, let's just do the test, Hallie. Okay. Okay. So the first question is, I am the life of the party at church. Okay. Okay, it's disagree, slightly agree, neutral, slightly agree, agree. Um, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go slightly agree. Okay. Okay. How I'm going to go agree. I mean, I think everybody knows that when I come in the room, things are going to be fun. You're a human pinata. Okay. Number two, I feel little concern for others at church. Hmm. Are we thinking of like all the members of Twin Hills or the staff? I think this is all staff based. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel little concern for others. Um, disagree. Okay. Uh, I would say um, disagree. I, I am definitely always concerned for others and the every, others are always on the foremost front of my mind. We had the same one, Greg. Oh, that's great. That's cool. Okay. The third one is I am always prepared for staff meetings. Uh, I'm going to have to go slightly disagree. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I would say agree. hundred percent. hundred and seven percent. Flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah. Uh, number four, uh, I get stressed out easily, uh, oh, w- agree. With, with church work. Agree. Oh, oh, stressed oh, out with easily. church work? Right. Yeah, I do get stressed out. Okay. Um, I don't think I've ever been stressed out at work. Ooh, say, so uh, I'll, I'll just say, oh, I, uh, I, sli- I, I slightly disagree. I think I can think of maybe one time I've said something on the podcast or something where something had gone wrong at youth or something. But yeah, slightly disagree. Uh, I have a rich, I have a rich Christian vocabulary. Awesome. Oh, that is great. I would slightly agree with that. I, I got a pretty good Christian lingo. Oh yeah, I think mine is amazing. I'd say agree. Yeah. I don't talk a lot uh, in staff meetings. Hmm. I would. I'm neutral. I'm neutral. I don't know how to answer that. One. Um. I definitely talk a lot because I've got these great ideas, and oh, I think people dude. want me to talk more. But sometimes, so I, I guess I'm going to say agree, but maybe I'll write down here. But also, people would probably like to hear more. That's true. I'm interested in other people on staff. Oh, agree. I disagree. I leave my belongings around. Hallie, I mean, you basically did this one today. My caboodle. That's right. So I'm. you're going to have to go agree on that one. Agree. I've never lost anything in my life, so I'm going to say I disagree. Okay. I'm relaxed most of the time when it comes to work-related tasks. Uh, disagree. <laughs> oh, totally agree. I'm very relaxed. 
I have difficulty understanding abstract ideas when it comes to theology. theology. Well, what's an abstract idea? Oh, you know, Hallie, like maybe like transubstantiation or, or some of the, the other stuff. That's the, um, the bread and the grape juice turn into Jesus inside us. Right. Wait, do we believe that? Uh, you know. We think it's symbolic. Yeah, we do symbol. Um, so, yeah, I think no on transubstantiation then, huh? Oh, no, I think he's just talking about like whenever, you know, somebody is really getting into the theology of stuff. I would just say, you know, I don't have difficulty understanding it, but I don't think you need it necessarily to have an awesome relationship with Christ. Can I be honest with you, Gray? And I've never told anyone this, but since we're talking about difficulty understanding abstract theological ideas, I know that we're supposed to so easily say that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are like water, vapor, and ice, or it's the um, the skin, the fruit, and the pit, or what, what are we supposed to say? I don't know what you're talking about, Hallie. But I just really have trouble understanding how God is Jesus, and Jesus is God, but it also is his son and is his dad. Like, I'm not my mom. And she's not me. Uh, we both have the last name. But then also, what if it was like, well, I'm my mom. Uh, her name's Anne. Uh, Anne and I are the exact same, but we're also not. We're in a parent-child relationship. And also, there's a ghost friend of ours. I've never gotten really the whole thing. Does is, does that mean I don't get abstract ideas? Uh, Hallie, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm just thinking of, um, have you ever heard that really hilarious song called I Am My Own Grandpa? No. You've never heard I, have, I Am My Own Grandpa? Uh, maybe I have. I was married to a widow who was pretty as can be. This widow had grown up, daughter who had a head of re uh, hair, hair of red. You've never heard this? No. Oh. But my, my father fell in love with her, and so they they two were wed. And then this day, my dad – this made my dad my son-in-law, and he really changed my life. Now my daughter was my mother because she was my father's wife. Uh -huh. He's married to a widow, Hallie. Okay. And she's pretty. I mean, I don't know what that has to do with it, but I think that's a good detail. Okay. And then the widow – had a grown-up daughter okay. who had red hair, also not sort of incidental. But the father, his, my father, fell in love with her, and then they were married, and then that made my dad my son-in-law, and that really changed, you know, my whole life because my daughter was my mother because she was my father's wife. Is it incest? Hallie, come on, just think about it like Old Testament style. Oh, so it's okay. Yeah, like it was okay for you know. Noah's kids and grandkids, and it was okay for Adam and Eve's kids. Right. You know, but it goes on because then it's, um, you know, because now, you know, uh, the, the father fell in love with her and soon they were wed and that made my dad, my son-in-law, and it really changed his life. Now my daughter was my mother because she was my father's wife. And then to complicate the matter, Hallie, now? and even though it brings me joy, I soon became the father of a bouncing baby boy. Oh, congratulations. And it's not me, Hallie. It's just the song. And then the little baby became a brother-in-law to dad. So he became my uncle, though it made him very sad. For if he were my uncle, then he also made him brother of the widow's grown-up daughter, who, of course, was his stepmother. Isn't that fun? And it goes on and on and on. And, you know, the father's wife has a son. They, you know, they have a grandchild. It's and just And this all great. happened because a fella married a lady who had a grown daughter, and then he ended up sleeping with his wife's daughter? Hallie, I think, see, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to abstract theology, is that once you really start asking, you know, questions like that, it doesn't even matter. You've missed the spirit of it. And the spirit, like the spirit of my own grandpa, like you're trying to take all the fun out of it, you know? Ah, oh. yeah. Well, somebody anyway. tried to tell me I couldn't like Hannah and her sisters, the movie anymore, because uh, Woody Allen was married to his daughter. And I, I asked my son Day about it. And he's like, yeah, Woody Allen is bad news, you know, in the Me Too stuff. And I just want to be able to watch my programs again Hallie this is caboodle to me but do you have a uh, difficulty understanding I abstract think I'd ideas? Have to say agree I would definitely say disagree uh, okay uh, you feel comfortable around other people on staff agree 
Uh, it depends on who. So I would say neutral. I insult people on staff. Never. 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 I'm never. totally 100% on never. that one. Never. I pay attention to details as uh, uh, I pay t- attention to the details of my work. I agree. You know, details aren't really my thing, Hallie. I'm, uh, I would say that I'm a big picture, big ideas guy, and I let other people take care of the details. Mm, cool. They're a bit boring. I worry about things. Uh, spiritual things or work things? Right. Or? I guess it just says I worry about things. Seems a bit bleak. Oh. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I, I am a bit of a worry wart. No, I mean, Jesus. Totally disagree. Oh. That's true. Yes, sir. Sorry, I have a vivid imagination about what is possible at Twin Hills. <gasps> agree. Oh, totally agree. In fact, I've got really great ideas, and a lot of times people don't ask me. I keep in the background at Twin Hills. Mm, slightly agree. Slightly, Hallie. You're always in the background. That's true. <laughs> uh, I would say strongly disagree. Uh, I sympathize with others' feelings about, uh, I sympathize with others at work and how they feel. I agree. Mm -hmm. I would say neutral. And then last is, (laughs) last is I start conversations. About Christ. About Christ. Agree. Totally agree. Well, should we see our result, Hallie? Oh. Is it tallying? Oh, okay. Okay, you got the here we go. Wheel. It's tallying. It's tallying. It's tallying. It's okay, tallying. yours is coming up first. There it is. Oh, oh, good job, Hallie. I'm an ITFS. ITFS, Inspira I'm an Trinitarian. I sure am. Uh, faithful and spirit filled. <laughs> ITFS. That's awesome. Oh, I'm a faithful Trinitarian, spirit filled. Uh, get inspired. Oh, I'm. So, I just feel so honored and blessed and okay, proud. Okay, here's mine, and I am an E. Ooh, uh, really? I don't think there's no way this could be right. ENJP? Are you an ENJP? An exhorting naysayer, Judas Pharisee. Well, How am I possibly an exhorting naysayer, Judas Pharisee, Hallie? I'm the most positive person here, and I know more than almost everybody about all the stuff. Maybe you pushed the wrong button. Yeah, I think this internet has been weird because we're, we're we're on the the center, you know, the retreat tennis internet. This is really. Oh, it can says. Can I take it again? N- oh, no, it, it says the results have been sent directly to Steve. Why do they? What? This is so annoying. Well, you know what? If I know Steve, he is going to have beautiful things to say about ENJP. No, basically it just shows the scale and it's like, that's the last one. That's the worst one. I didn't think there's supposed to be a value on it. No, I mean, it depends on if you're looking from the top or the bottom. You might be the first one. How can I be ENJP? ENJP, I'm at least spirit filled. You know what? You have to pat yourself on the back for being honest and just say, you know what? I am made in the image of God and I am a child of the utmost high God. And um, I'm sure that Steve has good spins on on the P's and the J's and the naysays. This is a real stinker. Real stinky stinko. Well, Hallie, uh, I do want to say um, I had kind of a weird afternoon and I didn't want to mention this, but um, I actually ran into someone that I probably should tell you about at oh. the retreat center. Clay Mason Bannerman? No. No. Oh. He's in Cabo this weekend. Oh. No, Hallie. I, I ran into Jen Hatmaker. Jay Hat? Yeah, she's here doing one of her like fancy classes. Awesome! I want to run into her. It was real. She's, she's so like here cool. teaching like some class or something called like "How to Be Awesome with Teens" or something. Oh, she's in the big auditorium. She's in well, the thirty thousand seater. It's not that big. Oh, how many are in your workshop, by the way? Because if I take it tomorrow, 
yeah, anyway, Hallie, it was super, super painful and it was pretty weird and awkward because you're still in love with her. Well, Hallie, I think she's still like obsessed with me. Oh, really? I, yeah. And you're not interested? I mean, Hallie, it was so hard. I mean, we had so much in common and I think we were like, do you know when you're so alike the person that you're dating that it almost is like you cancel each other out? Mm -hmm. That's what I've realized and what God has put on my heart about it is like, you know, maybe we were just like, instead of yin and yang, we were like, you know, yang and yang or something. And we just kind of like, just totally too much of the same awesome stuff. And, um, yeah, she said, I was like, Hey Jen, what's up? And she was like, Hey, and I was like, this is pretty weird. And she was like, yeah, I know. Um, you know, she kind of, at first she tried to act like she didn't know me, which was really painful. Uh, cause I just could tell she was trying to protect herself. But then, um, she, she came around, she gave me a hug. Um, you know, I was like, maybe you want to hang out later. We could go do the bocce ball, uh, uh play, uh, play pickleball, Ooh. Uh, you know, at, at the court. And, you know, she said, I'm super busy uh, right now. I'm just too busy right now. Mm. Well, when somebody's busy, that doesn't mean, you know, they're rejecting you. I don't know, Hallie. Why don't you call Clay? And you know, I told you Clay's in Cabo with a bunch of Marines. Oh, ex -Marines. wow. I mean, I guess they're reserves now. Anyway, Hallie. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, um, that happened, which was. I call that a drive-by. Right. It's like, it's, it's, you're not expecting it. And all of a sudden, you know, it's like somebody's blowing you down uh, in the course of your regular day. You're just going along and then you run into somebody who you gave your heart away to. And, um. It takes the wind right out of your sails. Well, I mean, Hallie, I don't really know if, you know, uh, you're so old that you just like that. It's dating is so different now. Like, oh, from, really? you know, we, when you were dating, like, I don't even know if you guys dated or anything like this was, cho this was so intense. And like, I think you guys just kind of were like, let's do it. Let's get married. We both love God. But this is really different because Hallie, when you're dating, like if you, me and Jay had, you're also navigating that whole thing of like, what is going to be positive for, you know, me, um, all the people that pay attention to me, listen to me, uh, are, are trying Can to you get as many followers as she has on Instagram. She has millions. I, I have close. So yeah, it's just a different thing, Hallie. You know, we dated my husband, Lance Labonte and I, um, we would go to macaroni grill. Oh, really? We Was loved it, it around then? We loved it. Um, we sometimes would go to Red Lobster, get the cheesy, cheesy biscuits. Ooh, just thinking about those cheesy biscuits. But don't you think the food has been so good here at the lodge? Oh, the food is amazing. Because uh, have you had the Salisbury steak, but no gravy? Absolutely. I had the gravy and oh, I had the mashed the potatoes. Gravy, <laughs> but it is really fantastic. So good. Yeah, so I like good. it when, I actually like it when meat is really hot and dry because you know if there's less water in it you retain less weight uh in, in your muscles and so you're getting rid of water weight but you're packing in that protein so i kind of like to eat, eat it like jerky oh cool have you ever been to that body worlds exhibit you just see human beings as beef jerky what is that Helly? It's when they take the water out of human bodies and put it on display. What? Any hooters. I was going to mention one thing, Gray, because uh, I've had to really, speaking of shooting up some quickies to the Lord, I've been having to pray pretty hard about how here at um, Indiana Dunes Lakeside Retreat, uh, they've had to keep all the bars open because those bartenders have a job to do and they can't just be sent home because it's a bunch of Christians here for the weekend. And, uh, or the week, I guess we're here all week. That's huh? right. And so these bartenders are showing up and they're opening up all the bars all across the lakeside. They got indoor ones, they got outdoor ones. And, you know, they're basically down every corridor and hallway. They got many bars in the fridges in the rooms. Uh, there's a, a big bar in the lodge part where we're getting our meals and, 
and it, every night they're opening up shop and like putting all the lights on and they've got these walls and shelves of booze. And that you can just tell all the servers are, are getting pretty, you know, PO'd because, you know, nobody, nobody from Twin Hills is, is buying any alcohol. I mean, they're not making what they usually make. I, you know, some people have gone in and said, I'll have a glass of wine, you know, and really uh, just a few, a handful of staffers, um, you know, kind of walk that line, you know, um, and I, I just don't like it. I don't like the taste. Right. I've never had any alcohol. Oh, is I, that right? No, I think, I mean, it's basically just sugar water. Wow. That's something I didn't know about you, Gray. Oh yeah. I don't drink alcohol. Ah, have you ever, forgive me if this is too personal a question, but have you ever smoked a cigarette? Well, Hallie, this is really a painful subject because I did, uh, you know, I was, have you ever heard when like a kid is caught smoking and forced to eat the pack of six or or smoke the whole pack is oftentimes what what parents do, which is great. I think that's a really good way to teach a kid, you know, is is, that what you advise people? Oh, I mean, I've just, I I feel like that's a number one, uh, you know, that that's what James Dobson says in his, several of his books is, you know, if they want to smoke one, they have to smoke them all. And, uh, that happened to me, Hallie, but here is the weird thing is that I, actually had never smoked a cigarette. Uh, my grandmother, who recently passed away, I think I've mentioned, she just... Claim is mad at me? What? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. She just uh, one day showed up and made me smoke a whole pack of cigarettes at age of four. Because, well, what did you do to deserve that? You know, I have no idea. Uh, she just basically said, you're never going to do this again. And she made me smoke them all. Again? She just, I, I think in the future, meaning. Well, if you weren't, oh, I see, I see. Well, if it wasn't uh, your uh, fault, uh, you had to obey a person in authority over you. Well, I sometimes think of it, Hallie, like, you know, they say, um, if you ever go to prison, go up to the biggest guy in the prison yard uh-huh. and punch him in the nose. Uh-huh. And I sometimes think, you know, it's like it with a kid who's headstrong. Maybe just spank them once just to let them know that's a possibility, even if they've not done anything. Yeah. And I think this was my grandmother knowing that I was such a, a you know, I had so much energy, but I was also really stubborn and um, as a young person and I didn't know Christ yet. And so I think she just wanted me to know like, hey, if you ever try to smoke my cigarettes, you know, this is what they taste like. So don't even go there. And I never did. But she inadvertently taught you how to smoke. I, I I know, but you know, cigarettes were so expensive in Australia. She was, she was just, I think just trying to save, you know, 30, 40, what would have been dollars. Cause that's how much they cost down there. Great. When you were talking, I was thinking, you know what? You should write a book because Dobson writes a lot of stuff about how to raise, you know, little kids, making sure you spank them to teach them discipline and all that. In fact, great. My son day comes home from a school. Uh, assembly where they were talking about safety and all these liberal things that the progressives are trying to push on these kids, teaching them, uh, giving them awards instead of awards for like athletic achievements and being competitive. They're giving these kids awards for things like empathy. Boring. And I'm like empathy. That's not one of the fruits of the spirit. Boring. Anyway, my son day goes to this assembly about they're talking about, safety and, um, open communication oh, I thought you were gonna say open carry. and, uh, 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 consent. Ugh. And uh, it's like, why don't you just teach these kids sex ed, teach right. them how to do it the way your grandma did with the smokes. Um, cause that's all they're doing is teaching teenagers how to do it. And then the teenagers will go do it. But anyway, my son day was telling me that like, mom, they're telling us that you shouldn't just always obey someone in authority because they're in authority, because then you can get into trouble. If this is not a trusted authority figure, you shouldn't be doing what they're saying. And I said, no day, you always obey someone in authority. And day was like, don't you see how that could, you know, groom someone to possibly, you know, be taken advantage of by someone. And I just said, you know what day, it is not about what you want. 
We teach the Bible, which is forego what you want and do what God wants you to do. Exactly. And you have to say, hey, Day, guess who put that person in authority? God. Who's the ultimate authority? Isn't that right? Yeah. And so, yeah, when people when people start to say things like that and, you know, especially people like Day who are a bit dumb, what happens is then they start to mistrust all authority. And then what do you've got? Mayhem. That's Total right. Mayhem. It's anarchy. And then Day also said... Um, you know, this social worker said, um, raise your hand if or she, they were doing this thing where they weren't raising their hands, but they were making a mental note of it because back in the day we would just raise our hands and we would be honest and right. let people see. But she thought it was a privacy issue. So she said, in your mind, raise your hand if you come from a, a physically uh, abusive household. And then and and Day said, in his, I said, what did you say in your mind? And he said, no. And I said, oh, good. And she goes, now say in your mind, yes or no. Do you come from a spanking household? And Day said, yeah. And then she goes, well, guess what? Those two are the same thing. What? This is the way they're poisoning our kids. Um, they're absolutely poisoning our kids. Anyway, I think you should write a book about how to raise teenagers because you're so good with them. Yeah, maybe it could be something and like... And teenagers get to the point where you can't spank them, you know, because right. they're bigger than you. Well, you. You can't hold them down and You whip can, them. Hallie. You can, actually. You can? You're allowed to spank a teenager for sure. I mean, I can't do it at church anymore, but they really, I think it's something that they really respond to. Oh, so you just say, keep going Dobson all the way. Right. Oh, okay. But you should write a book because you would have a cool title and you would look so cool oh, on yeah. the author cover. Maybe part. I, I really should. You know, I'm into those. Um, I'm into PDF books, but that you can get um on just on your phone because they're so fast to read and you know maybe just like oh, 11, cool. 12 pages. So maybe I'll I'll release an ebook and I'll call it "Spanking Smoke and Spank Smoke and Sex: How to uh, How to um How to Smoke uh, Strike and um." Uh, shame the the bad habits from your stupid teen spank smoke and sex that's catchy what's the subtitle again you know what i i don't really know